Hey guys, welcome back. It is Bible Scribe. Thank you for joining me yet again. This video is about my timeline of the events surrounding the year AD 70 and the Siege of Jerusalem. And you know I did a, a previous video on this very topic where I went through a whole timeline of the years about uh, 60 AD through 73 AD. And this video is an update to that because I have continued to build that timeline and I have new information this time around. I was cleaning out some of my old wiki information that I have stored on my local machine here and I found uh, not only some references in Cassius Dio's Roman history that we're going to put into the timeline and look at, but also some uh, recorded events of other earthquakes during the, the years leading up to the Siege of Jerusalem. And I thought these things were so important that I definitely want to include them in this timeline. And I wanted you guys to know about them, so I have done this as an update video to my previous one on the timeline surrounding the year AD 70 and the Siege of Jerusalem. So to start off with, I'm going to go through my new timeline with you. We won't go through the other things that we already looked at in the other timeline uh, in the previous video. So I'm going to just, I may skim through those things very quickly, but I'm not going to spend time on them. This is mainly about these new items that have been added to the timeline that we're going to look at specifically. So let me get that up for you. Here is this timeline now. I, I had it in a Word document. Now I've moved to my wiki uh, so I can really build it out in a table format a little better. Uh, but what we've got here is the same as before. You can see that I have added in my legend Cassius Dio's Roman history and I have a link to that. I will give you guys the links that I've used in this timeline. Again, I'm going to put this all in the descriptive notes for the video, and I'm going to put the link there to my blog where I will update that timeline and put the links there as well. So you'll have all the information for your own study and research. But as you can see, I've now pulled this timeline back to the year 51 AD, and that's mainly because of some of the earthquake events that I found in my older notes that I'm now bringing forward into this timeline. because why are the earthquakes important? And that is because Jesus Christ himself predicted that there would be earthquakes in various places uh, in the years leading up to his second coming, which would have been 70 AD. And, you know, people always say when they're like debating about the, uh, you know, the, the 70 AD date as when Christ was talking about for all those birth pangs and wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes, they debate that and they're like, well, there were no earthquakes recorded. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of earthquakes recorded and we're going to go through some of those. For instance, you can see here in the year 51 AD, Tacitus records that there was an earthquake in Rome. And then Josephus in the same year records a massive earthquake in Judea. So these earthquakes did occur. Again, remember that this is still the reign of Caesar Nero. So he is in, uh, is reigning as the Caesar at this time. Then it, it skips a few years because, again, you know, this is me fleshing out this timeline as I go. And some years I just don't find information yet. And that could change as time goes on. I may do successive updates to this video. But here in uh, 59 AD, in about the time of October, now some of these dates I put in as question marks because I don't know the exact time. But... What I was able to do is because of the events that were occurring and other events in relationship to them, I knew kind of where on the timeline they go. So I am 99% sure that these things are in chronologically correct order and that I've got the dates as close as I could possibly get them uh, without probably someone more knowledgeable about the dating of these events in the books. Um, you know, and I'm saying they could get it within the, the month or the day maybe, but I'm at the month period here and uh, I have the sequence right. It's just a matter of, you know, the fine details. But in October of 59 AD, I don't know if you know much about the story of Nero and all the crazy weird things he did because he was a nutcase. Uh, people literally called him the beast. Um, 
not in reference to the scriptures, but because he was a madman and during, you know, fights in the Colosseum with the, where they would feed the Christians to the lions and stuff like that, he would jump in there and do weird things. I'm just telling you, he was a madman. Someday I may do a video on him alone. But he had his mother murdered in 59 AD. Uh, and this is recorded in Cassius Dio, uh, book 61 or chapter 61, verse 16. And that's the third paragraph of, of verse 16. Uh, and the reason I recorded that is because at his mother's funeral, probably that same day or close there after, the sun went into a total eclipse and the stars could be seen in the sky. And so that's pretty amazing. Um, it sounds like a very uh, full eclipse where the sun was completely blacked out. And this happened on his mother's funeral after he had killed her. Uh, and then as Nero and this next item is waiting for his dinner to be brought to him during the festivities for his mother's funeral as well, lightning actually strikes his food that's being brought to him as it's being brought and uh, consumes it completely, burns it to, to vapor. Uh, and this is recorded again in Cassius Dio in the same verses there. And then in 61 AD, skipping a couple years, there were earthquakes in Colossae, Hierapolis, Laodicea, and these earthquakes destroyed all three of those cities completely, just shook them to the ground. The buildings fell apart, the people scattered, and left the, the cities. The only city that was rebuilt was Laodicea. And these are not... Uh, these are recorded in all three Tacitus, Eusebius writings, and Orosius' writings. So we have a lot of record of those, uh, you know, parallel records of those events. Also in 61 AD, Tacitus and Philostratus record that there was an earthquake in Crete. In 61 AD also, there were earthquakes recorded by Philostratus in Smyrna, Miletus, Chios, Samos, and in all the places the Jews had settled, and that's a quote from his writing, that there were earthquakes in all these places, and they seemed to be all the places that the Jews had been living at the time, which would be uh, poignant specifically because of the prophecies Christ gave about the earthquakes, and, and he came to the Jews to try to turn them back to God before he judged them, and uh, these earthquakes were going on all over in the places where they lived. So just to kind of skip forward, the, these next n number of items are all things we went through the last time in the other video, so I'm not going to spend time on them. But in 62 AD, there was the Feast of Tabernacles, and shortly thereafter, Jesus ben Annas runs through the city crying, Woe, woe to Jerusalem for seven years, starting at that time. I didn't record anything in 63 AD, but in 64, we had the Great Fire of Rome, and shortly thereafter, the Apostle Paul was beheaded by Nero. In 65 AD, we have a lot of things that Josephus recorded in Wars of the Jews, a lot of signs. Light shines on the temple, star appears as a sword over Jerusalem for a year, a comet appears for a year, there's the Passover, and then the eastern gate of Jerusalem starts to open by itself. A virgin cow gives birth to a lamb inside the temple. Uh, and then in May of that year, angelic armies are seen waging war in the heavens and around the cities. And then Pentecost occurs, and the priests in the temple that Pentecost feel a, a earthquake in the temple. And the voices, they hear voices in the temple saying, let us remove hence at that time. The Apostle Thaddeus is crucified also in 65 AD. And now look here at these events that I've added. This is one event that I definitely remembered as I was actually editing the last video. I remembered, well, this was the time that John received the vision in Revelation. And there's a reason we know that. But here I've re recorded that, 65 AD. And the reason is very specific as to why it is at that time. And so we're going to jump really quick to Revelation chapter 17 and talk about how we know John received the vision that's in Revelation in about 65 AD during the reign of Nero, Caesar Nero. So let me jump over to Revelation chapter 17. We're going to look at this very shortly, but because it tells us, he tells John in Revelation chapter 17 
who's reigning at the time and the succession of what he says are kings. And so let's look at that. In chapter 17, this first section is about the woman and the beast. It's a symbolic telling of a sequence of events. And so we can see here in verse 2, uh, with whom the kings, oh, there's a great whore that sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Well, in the Old Testament, if you remember, who's the great whore? Who's the harlot? It's Jerusalem. It's Israel because they have left their first love, right? The book of Hosea is all about this. And so the, the great harlot or whore is Mystery Babylon, which is the same as Israel. That is who Israel is. It says, He carried me in the spirit to the wilderness. I saw the woman sit upon a scarlet beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones, having a cup full in her hand of abomination, the filthiness of her fornication. And on her name, her head and name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, harlot of har mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. She was drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs. Who killed the saints, the prophets, and the martyrs? It was the Jews. They killed all of God's prophets. Um, and so then the mystery here, which he just has told John, is explained in the next few verses. That's verses 7 through 13. Actually, it goes a little further, but the part we need to read for our uh, information about who is in power at the time John's receiving this vision is in these verses. It says, And the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery. So he's going to tell the mystery. <clears throat> and this is one thing in prophecy you need to always check for, is make sure that after you read a prophecy, you read the next section of Scripture too, because oftentimes God just interprets it for you, or the angel who gives it, he just interprets it for you and tells you what it is. And that's what's happening here. So this angel tells John, The beast that you saw and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. So this beast, note that this beast ascends out of the bottomless pit and goes to destruction. Well, that's a fallen entity. That's an angel demon entity. It, it came out of the abyss, the bottomless pit. That's Tartarus. So we know this is an angel. The beast is a, a, an angelic, demonic entity, all right? It's not a man, okay? And so we see here that the beast uh, was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder those whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast, and here is the mind that has wisdom. So now he's saying, look closely. This is what you need to understand. The seven heads are seven mountains. And there are seven mountains, seven hills, on which Rome sits. So we know this is talking, or probably is talking, about Rome. It's the city on seven hills. It's been called that throughout ancient history. And it says there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he comes, he must continue a short space. So now we have interesting information. He says at the beginning there are seven heads and ten crowns. Okay? And he says the seven heads are mountains. And so that we know this beast has something to do with Rome. This is the seven hills of Rome. And then this, the, the ten crowns are kings. And he says there are seven kings. He's talking about the first seven Five are fallen at the time John gets this writing. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. That would be seven. And it says that next one that's coming would only be for a short space. So when we look at John in the time of the writing of this, and we're talking about ten kings, there were ten Caesars up until the time of 70 A.D., if you didn't know that. And, and I have this in other videos, but I'm giving it here to you too. There were 10 Caesars. And so if we're looking at what, were, what was the first five, um, there were five before Nero. 
and that started with Julius Caesar. And if you count the Caesars up to Nero, there were Julius, then four more, and then Nero. So he was the sixth. And so it's saying here, five are fallen, one is, that's Nero, and one is yet to come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. The one that succeeded Nero when Nero committed suicide was Galba. And he only reigned, I think it was from like June, it's in my timeline, we'll go back to it, but I think it was June to December. It was only a, like a six or seven month period. And so we find out that that matches this in the vision perfectly. And Jesus, or God, is giving John this vision to tell him, this is the setting you're in right now, and this prophecy and this mystery is concerning you and the time you're in. And he's telling him about the nature of the Roman um, Caesars and the Roman, uh, you know, uh, empire. And uh, so that matches it perfectly. And I'll be honest, when I first saw this in Revelation, I realized it matched those Caesars perfectly. And, and even the next one will continue a short space. In fact, the next three, Galba, Otho, and Vitellius, all were just a few months each. And... They, you know, one of them got murdered, one got killed, one got... It, it was a crazy time. And then the, the last king, the tenth king, was uh, Vespasian. And so, uh, this is, you know, this is just, for me, cements this vision and tells me, wow, this really was actually fulfilled in the first century in this time period. So, let's go back to our timeline now that we've established that this is talking about... Uh, the ten kings here are the Caesars, and it's, uh, it specifically identifies John's vision as being in the midst of the sixth king, or Caesar, which is Nero. And so that's why, going back to my timeline, that's why I inserted this here, because that places it here in history. 65 AD, uh, during the reign of Nero, and he says that there's a new, another uh, Caesar coming. You see that down here in 68 AD is when Galba comes. And he is only the Caesar from June of 68 AD until December of 68 AD. Because in January, Otho becomes Caesar. And so that is why I added that in there. I wanted to make sure we recognize that this, in the midst of this tribulation, uh, or right before it, because I consider 67 AD the start of the literal three and a half years of tribulation. Um, but right before that, God gives John this vision, and it's a warning to send out to those seven churches of Asia so that they are ready for this time. It's going to be nuts. All right? And so they got that warning. That was the whole point of the book. It wasn't for us to read in 2000 whatever and try to apply it to our lives. He wrote it to the people in 65 AD so they could apply it to their lives and actually avoid being murdered inside the city. He tells them to head for the hills to get out of town. Um, and so it was for them. It's for their benefit and edification. And it all makes sense when Jesus, uh, in the vision there, gives it to John and locks it down to Nero and says, this is the time period and this is the stuff we're talking about in this vision, John. It's just amazing to me. Amazing. I love it. Also in 65 AD, I found that there were earthquakes again in Laodicea and in Campania. Uh, this was all, quote, during the reign of Nero, according to Tacitus, Philostratus, and Seneca. All uh, historians there writing about these events. In 67 AD, uh, again, I... I Pin this as when the tribulation, the three and a half years up to 70 AD, actually starts. The Jewish priesthood in, in this time frame ceases. It's actually so corrupt that they can't choose a high priest and they draw lots to pick a high priest. And so that makes it illegitimate. The Jewish priesthood just ceases at that time. Galba becomes Caesar in 68 AD in June. Uh, Nero commits suicide, as we spoke about. And in 68, also there is an earthquake in Rome, recorded by Suetonius, um, while Galba is still reigning. Then in January of 69 AD, Otho becomes Caesar. 
for just a short period of time again. And a comet is seen in the sky. This is a new event, comet event that Cassius Dio reports, uh, different than the previous one that Josephus reported, that another comet is seen. And the moon eclipsed twice, three days apart at one point during 69 AD. It eclipsed on a Wednesday and then again on a Saturday, the same week, um, which is amazing. We've, I've never heard of or seen that happen in my lifetime for sure. Also in 69 AD, there was a day where people saw two suns at the same time, and one seemed weak and pale in appearance, and the other seemed brilliant and powerful. Just another sign, you know, when Christ in the Olivet Discourse was talking about, you know, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, or I may have said that backwards, regardless, um, this is the fulfillment of those things. These things were happening all through these years leading up to 70 AD and the siege of Jerusalem. It's amazing to me that, you know, all this happened, people don't want to recognize it, people just pretend like there's no record, but there is a record. It's in these writings, it's in the historians of the day, but because nobody reads them, we don't apparently see that this stuff happened. Another thing Cassius Dio records in 69 AD was that soldiers around the capital of Rome and near the temple of Jupiter said they saw huge footprints all over the place and that the door of the temple of Jupiter had opened by itself and it was so scary for them that some of the guards themselves just fainted on the night watch. They fainted and just <laughs> were laid out. Cassius Dio, uh, book 65, chapter 8 is where this is found. But, and I can't say that I know, you know, what these footprints were specifically, but it sounds angelic, it sounds spiritual. Uh, if they were huge, they weren't human, you know, they were, it was something different. And this is, um, this to me, it's just amazing. More signs that this time in history was just uh, very important to God, very important and to me confirms the importance of this time of fulfillment of prophecy in 70 AD and everything that led up to it. And this was just one of those things. In 69 AD in April, Otho the Caesar was murdered and Vitellius becomes Caesar. And he again is one of these short emperors. He's only emperor for uh, looks like 10 months or so. But in 69 AD, while uh, Vitellius is ruling, uh, the moon is eclipsed at one point and it appears both blood colored like a red blood moon and black at the same time. I don't know how what that means. Perhaps it was kind of undulating, oscillating between the colors, but it says it also gave out other colors. And this was just days before Vitellius' death, which would have been in December of 69 AD. Uh, again, this is recorded in Cassius Dio, chapter 65, verse 11, or book 65, chapter 11. I'm sorry, get these mixed up. Uh, so there we have it. In 69 AD, Vitellius is beheaded just after these, this eclipse moon occurs with the, all the different colors. And Vespasian becomes Caesar, and then this is the time Titus' army is sent to Jerusalem to start the siege. And what happens, of course, in 70 AD, right after the siege starts, is there's an earthquake in Jerusalem, and it's accompanied by a violent, violent storm with rain and continuous lightnings and thunders. And the people that experienced this said it was like it was an indication of coming destruction. They took it as an omen because it was so violent. Um, and that is in, actually, Josephus' Wars, uh, Book 4, Chapter 4, Verse 5. Uh, and again, in the beginning of 70 A.D., just after Titus and his armies uh, are coming towards or reach Jerusalem for the siege. So Titus' armies arrive. Jesus ben Ananus, the guy who goes around yelling, Whoa, whoa, is killed by a catapult stone shortly after the armies get there. The temple is burnt to the ground on August 6th, the 9th of Av. And then on that same day, I just noted this, that Cassius Dio mentions that this was the day, the Roman day of Saturn, the celebration of their god, Saturn, also named Kronos, uh, Helios to the Greeks, I believe, 
Um, so there is some interesting information behind the god Saturn for them. But just to note that it's interesting that it was almost as if that day God allowed the beast and his work to supersede that of the Jews and show them that they had been defeated because that was not only the Jews' holy day, but it was Saturn's holy day. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, and then the rest of our timeline plays out as it did before. The Apostle Matthias is stoned and beheaded. Bartholomew is killed. Andrew is crucified, all in 70 AD. And then again, as we mentioned in the other video, in 72 AD, the Flavian Amphitheater is built with Jewish slave labor. The Jews that were captured were all put into slavery. And in 73 AD, three and a half years after the destruction of the temple, the fortress of Masada falls with all the remaining Jewish zealots and army uh, to the Roman armies. And the Jews commit group suicide there to avoid imprisonment and capture by the Romans. But that would be the end of the rule of the Jews in Rome. And that was under, of course, Caesar Vespasian. So that finishes up and tidies up what I've got now on this timeline. You can see how many of those little icons show that we added here, quite a few things, but it was all these different earthquakes and signs I couldn't avoid bringing into this picture. A lot of earthquakes early on in 60, or 51 AD, 59 AD, uh, signs when Nero murdered his mother, signs in 61 AD of earthquakes all over the place, cities being destroyed. Then in 65 AD, I wanted to bring in that John received the book of Revelation at this time period, around 6, 65 AD, uh, just before the tribulation, and it was a warning to the seven churches to get out of Dodge before the siege started in 7, 67 AD. Then we recorded this earthquake in Rome in 68, comets, eclipses, two suns seen on one day at the same time. I mean, crazy signs. Uh, more eclipses with different colored moons. It's just amazing all the different things that God allowed to or caused to occur during this time period. So I, I'm glad that you guys were with me. Thank you for joining me again uh, with this video. I hope that the update is helpful for you. It gives you a little more information, insight into how miraculous this time period was and how many people recorded this. Just think of all the... Uh, the writers that we've talked about on my timeline, I've sourced Hippolytus, Cassius Dio, Josephus, Wars of the Jews, Tacitus, Philostratus, Seneca, the Book of Revelation itself, uh, Eusebius, Church History, uh, uh, Orosius, I think I said Tacitus, but oh my goodness, that's so many different sources of historical writers. Um, most of those, I think all except for Eusebius, are uh, to the period of the 1st and 2nd century. So they're very early historians and writers. Um, but that is pretty much it. Thank you for joining me yet again. And if I get more information that um, significantly will add to this timeline, I will continue adding. And by the end of this, if we do another video or so, this is going to be a pretty amazing timeline. The events of this time period, just incredible. Praise God. To Him be the glory for these things that He did. So miraculous and so amazing. So uh, take that to heart and do your own study. Again, I'll put the links and my blog post in the description. So God bless. Have a great night.